One of the three variables controlling your exposure is the shutter speed. Shutter speed is vital in determining the correct exposure in your image as well as the creative look of it. In the previous lessons, we spoke about how a digital camera works. Just a quick rerun. When you press the shutter button on your digital camera, a mechanism called a shutter allows light that passes through the lens to get to the imaging sensor of the camera. The sensor then captures and stores the image. The mechanism that opens up and allows light to be absorbed by the sensor is like a curtain covering the image sensor that opens up when a button is pressed. It is very important and known as the shutter. So the way in which a shutter functions is that when the camera fires, it opens to let light through to the image sensor and after a specific period of time, the shutter then closes, stopping light from hitting the sensor. The length of time during which your camera shutter remains open exposing light onto the sensor is called the shutter speed. It is basically the amount of time that your camera spends taking a photo. There are three important things to know about shutter speed. When you have a long shutter speed, you expose your sensor for a lengthy period of time, which causes motion blur of the image as well as a brighter image. Fast moving objects appear blurred in the direction of the motion, and this effect is used in many creative ways like to emphasize the sense of motion of cars or people walking on the street. And if you have a very dark but stationary scene, a slow shutter speed can allow you to gather enough light to expose correctly. There isn't much motion blur since the scene is static and nothing is moving. Use of a tripod is however vital to be able to achieve this. I don't know if any of you have seen photographs of waterfalls and fireworks where the water appears to be a soothing cloud or the fireworks are long streaks of light. That is all achieved by a slow shutter speed. On the other hand, if you have a fast shutter speed, you can effectively do the opposite and freeze motion. And if you use a particularly fast shutter speed, you can freeze fast moving objects that would otherwise not be easily visible to the human eye. Like a bird in mid-flight or a dolphin as it breaches and even athletes during sporting events. All of this can be achieved simply by altering the shutter speed of your camera. Shutter speed is typically measured as a fraction of a second when the value is shorter than a second. So, for example, a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second means 0.01 seconds and 1 4th of a second is a quarter of a second or 0.25 seconds. Most modern digital cameras have mechanical shutters that can handle speeds of up to 1 4,000th of a second, with the more premium models being able to handle up to 1 8,000th of a second. The longest available shutter speed on most cameras is generally 30 seconds. So we've discussed the two important creative effects shutter speed can have on your image out of the three. The final and most important effect that shutter speed has on your image is the exposure. Remember that in the last few lessons, we've been talking about how exposure is affected by ISO, aperture and shutter speed. Shutter speed alone can be used to determine the correct exposure of an image, albeit with some limitations that we'll discuss in a minute. So for example, a quicker shutter speed or short exposure time will result in a darker image while a longer shutter speed or lengthy exposure time will result in a much brighter image. And if you stop and think about this logically for a second, it actually makes a great deal of sense. We said that the camera's image sensor is sensitive to light, meaning that it absorbs light when exposed to it. So if we allow the sensor to be exposed to light for longer, like we do with a long shutter speed, we are essentially just giving the sensor more time to gather more light, making the image brighter. And conversely, if we're shooting with a fast shutter speed or short exposure time, we are effectively giving the image sensor a shorter period of time to gather light, making the image darker. So yes, you can correctly expose your image simply by individually altering the shutter speed, but there are limitations. For example, if you're shooting on a very bright day but want to use a slow shutter to emphasize the motion in your image, you'll find that your image will come out with an exposure that is too high or will be too bright. This is called an overexposed image. This is because there's plenty of light outside and if you allow your sensor to be exposed to it for too long, then it will absorb too much light overexposing and effectively ruining the image. And on the other hand, if you're shooting in low light, you need a slow shutter speed to gather more light. However, you'll quickly realize that your images will end up being way too blurry and out of focus due to slight movements of vibrations when handling the camera. Ultimately, you have to find the perfect balance and lucky for you and I, exposure is not only controlled by the shutter speed, but by the three variables ISO, aperture and shutter speed. This is where balancing those three becomes essential. We'll talk more about that in a later lesson. Another limitation you will find with your shutter is that since it is an actual mechanical device, there is a blinder looking device that has to move up and down to cover and expose your sensor when you hit the shutter button. That alone comes with its own physical limitations. 
and that is why, as mentioned earlier, the fastest mechanical shutter today can achieve a shutter speed of 1 8,000th, but not any quicker. So if that is not enough to correctly expose your image, then you're out of luck and won't be able to expose your image using just your shutter speed. Or will you? Now remember we said that the image sensor in a digital camera is digital. So basically it functions through electronic circuitry. Well, that means it can be turned on and off, right? That is absolutely right. And this is where electronic shutter or e-shutter comes into play. It turns out that you can actually expose your sensor to light without ever using an actual mechanical shutter. So basically your sensor is constantly exposed to light. Then the image sensor is activated for a specific period of time and then turned off again. The time during which the sensor is on becomes your shutter speed and you are able to achieve the right exposure in your image. And because electronic shutter has no mechanical parts, it is able to achieve much faster shutter speeds than a traditional mechanical shutter without ever making a sound. Some of the fastest cameras today can achieve electronic shutter speeds of up to 1 32,000th of a second and you can see that is significantly quicker than the fastest mechanical shutter. So it appears that e-shutter is better than a mechanical shutter in every way. So why do we still have and use both in our cameras? Well, it turns out that electronic shutter actually has some pretty significant disadvantages, but that will be covered in a future class that focuses on more complex aspects of digital photography. In summary, shutter speed is the time that your sensor is exposed to light controlled by the shutter in your camera. It can be used to expose your image and also to achieve some creative photographic effects. Modern digital cameras have two types of shutter. A mechanical shutter that is like a shade that covers and exposes the image sensor and an electronic shutter that has no moving parts and works by simply turning the image sensor on and off. A fast shutter speed or short exposure time freezes motion and can be used to photograph fast moving objects. A slow shutter speed or lengthy exposure time can be used to expose a very dark but static scene or create motion blur in your images, which emphasizes motion. So far, we've only covered ISO and shutter speed when it comes to the variables that control exposure and the exposure triangle. In upcoming classes, we'll take a look at aperture, the exposure triangle, and more. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the rest of the lessons in this class where we focus on other fundamental aspects of digital photography.